Look how big this thing is. We do not need all that just for a little bit of light over here. And look how clean it's already looking over here. This thing's so much smaller. Check this out. You can turn it on and off from your computer. Just click on the thing. You can control the brightness and the temperature. Yo, what's good? Good, man. How you been? That's what's up. Yeah, no, my sleep schedule's been fucked too, bro. It's the worst. Just YouTube shit, man. As you should, bro. Cause you about to get 100k subs, right? Yeah, real close. Probably by the end of this month. No one that like really spoke to us or like had to reach out yet, so. I literally get DMs every day like, yo, like you in Chicago, I'm trying to shoot all this stuff. And then I post on my story that I'm trying to shoot and it's like crickets. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, we're just trying to do some community shit too. Like, it's not even like I'm trying to like get the bag or anything. Like if I do the contest, I'm literally gonna give out money to shoot a video. I like this shit, this shit's smooth. Ooh. Like just, you got, you got your over oh shit, my bad. I always do that shit. <laughs> I said you've been going crazy, I like this song. We're gonna get your ass out to Chicago. All right, bet. sounds good. All right, dude, Bless. peace. Working on getting this artist out here, that way we can film something for a music video contest, because at 100K, we might have a music video contest. Who knows? Got the, all the panels up. Dude, the echo is like completely gone now. It's so much better. Just need to get some kind of drawer for right over there. Get all those wires in check. And the setup's coming together. I mean, it's looking pretty damn clean. Ooh. I figured today I'm gonna keep it really clean and show you one of my favorite transitions. It's like this low shutter picture effect. If you've been following me for a while, you know I'm a sucker for the picture transitions and just low shutter in general. And not only just on the computer, I'm gonna show you all the settings in your camera that you need to know to make it as buttery smooth as possible. We're gonna be recreating something very similar to this, but to do that, I need to show you what I'm doing on this camera. So on my camera, I have the Sony a7S III, but you can literally do this on almost every camera. I like to change my mode to manual and then turn the shutter angle. So the one out of whatever number you see here, typically when you're shooting videos, it's one out of 50, but we want this to be lower. This is basically how long it takes your shutter to close. So if you have it take longer, like 0.5 seconds, it takes 0.5 seconds for it to take one picture. The example I showed you was at one third, but let's go and do a little bit more of a low shutter look so we can do something like 0.5 and then if you want to get that sequence that i was showing you where i was kind of zooming into one specific thing i like to turn on the grids i don't know if you guys can see and then just focus the subject in the center of it every single time it's pretty similar to how you would do a hyperlapse and you would like zoom into the same spot and keep track but i like doing that with low shutter and not as precise and i think it has a really cool look so i'll show you an example at 0.5 shutter speed that basically means it takes half a second to take a photo so you'll hear the shutter click and then just walk forward so i'm going to start out here focusing on my desk and I'm gonna slowly walk towards it, keeping my monitor in center, while also kind of slowly rotating my camera. You don't have to rotate your camera, you don't have to keep something in focus, you can just take a bunch of photos and it'll have that cool look. That's just something that I thought looked cool, so that's what I did. And that's 0.5 seconds, so let's turn it up to one second shutter speed, so there's gonna be a little bit more blur and it's gonna be brighter. And keep in mind when you start turning up the numbers higher to like one or two seconds, the more camera movement you have, it's gonna get blurry real quick. So for example, I were to just take a photo here, kind of move my camera around, every single movement that you have in the camera is gonna be shown a lot more. So we'll do pretty much the same example, but walking at the desk at one shutter speed instead, so pretty much doing the same thing. It just takes a bit longer for the photos to actually take. So now back on my computer, I have my photos loaded up in Lightroom. I just personally like it because you get a little bit more control in the color grading process. We're just gonna go through right now and recolor the first photo and then we're just gonna copy and paste it throughout all of them. That's what's nice about it. Once you take one photo and grade it, you only have to do it to one. So I'm gonna bring down the highlights, up the shadows, but then bring up the whites and down the blacks. Highlights affect the lights overall and shadows affect the shadows overall, but whites affect the brightest highlights and black affects the darkest shadows. So when you're playing around with whites and you bring that up, it's only affecting the brightest area. So it's basically making the extremes even brighter. I'm gonna bring just a bit of warmth into the photo because I think it looks cool with the pink and then we can even tint it a bit more pink just because it fits the vibe of my room and why not bring up the vibrance a little bit. And then I'm just gonna turn down the saturation. I think just adding a little bit of texture back in and some grain always looks cool. Not too much grain because I'll add some of that in Premiere. And then also another thing about bringing it into Lightroom that's nice is you can remove chromatic aberrations and also enable lens corrections. That way you don't have any vignetting. Now I'm just gonna control C and paste that throughout all of our photos. If you see your photo go into portrait mode, you can click control and then one of the brackets and it's gonna rotate it one way. Just make sure you rotate it the right way. Paste it on. If you're in Premiere Pro or any other video editing software, you can just rotate it. It's not that big of a deal. 
but that's the key bind in Lightroom. So then using my left and right arrows, you can kind of already visualize the effect. We're gonna enhance what it looks like and make it look a lot better in Premiere Pro, but you can go kind of quickly and see kind of what that sequence is gonna look like. So that whole sequence was half a second shutter speed. This is an example of photo with a one second shutter speed, but I kind of moved the camera around a lot. You can see there's a lot of blurring and this might be an aesthetic that you guys are going for. For our example, it's not something we're particularly looking for, but you can definitely incorporate this into videos. And then here is our example at one second shutter speed with the same exact movement. So you can see the difference. You can already tell there's a lot more blur and it's a little harder for the camera to catch focus. It does have a pretty cool look. I'm just gonna apply the same grade and make sure to flip the camera. And then I'm just gonna export those photos to a folder and there's a specific way that before I drag these photos into the timeline I'm gonna have them already cut at the right speed that I want so to do that in Premiere Pro we're gonna go to edit preferences and then go to timeline inside timeline you're gonna see something that says still image default duration I change that to frames and then you can make that last however many frames you want I'd normally do something around two to five frames I have it set to three right now that way when you drag all of the photos in at once they're all gonna be exactly three frames and the transitions pretty much already gonna be done now most cameras automatically name their pictures in numerical order so if you go down to this setting here and go to sort by name so now it says 1734 is the first one 1735 is the second one and so on so I'm gonna click on the first image in the sequence and then hold shift and click on the last one that's going to highlight all of them and if we drag them into our timeline so now each image lasts exactly three frames long one two three and it switches one two three and it switches depending on your sequence settings your camera might have taken it at a really crazy resolution so you can scale it to frame size and then reposition it if you want the black bars on the side you can leave it i'm just going to scale it up till it's gone and then copy the motion settings to all the other ones so they're the exact same size and now we pretty much already have a transition this is the part where you can really get creative now you can leave the sequence just like that and have it as a transition between two clips or you could add more blur we're going to add sound effects you can add some overlays on top there's a lot of stuff that you can do to now spice this up it's all about getting creative. I'm thinking I'm gonna highlight all of the images and then make a nested sequence. That way we can apply an effect to the whole sequence without having to copy and paste it throughout. I designed my essentials effects and transition pack pretty much for this whole entire aesthetic. So really you can drag on anything you want to enhance this effect. For example, here's digital camcorder on top of it. It has a little bit of a retro vibe. I think I'm gonna keep this one really clean and just duplicate this nested sequence and drag on my film halations preset to the top one. And then I'm gonna make an adjustment layer and drag my film looks preset on top of that. That way it has a little bit more of a vintage vibe to it. And then I'm just gonna do some final color tweaking to that original sequence and just change just a bit of the settings, add in a little bit more contrast, kill a bit of the saturation. And also another effect that you can drag on to an adjustment layer on top of all of this is lens distortion. If you bring it negative, it's gonna have like this zoom in kind of look. I think I'm just gonna leave it at negative 15. It looks cool without anything keyframed. This effect works so well with sound effects, it just adds some life to the transition. So for my essential sound effects pack, the camera and shutters folder, I'm gonna go in and drag the camera all in one, and then I'm gonna find a sound effect that I like. <laughs> Holy shit, that's so, <laughs> I was blurring music. <laughs> that's so loud. All right, there we are. I think I like this one. It's a little, sounds weak. It sounds like a weak camera, but it, I think it will fit this effect really well. So I'm gonna drag that waveform in and we're gonna line everything up. That way every three frames it has that sound effect. So let's go to the beginning. We're gonna line it right at the beginning. And since the audio lasts a bit longer than the actual thing, I'm just gonna alternate layers. So on this audio layer, there's gonna be one and then down here, there's gonna be another one. And then on the next one, I'll bring it back up to the top. So one, two, three, drag it up. One, two, three, drag it down. And once you have that pattern down, since it is every three frames, you can just duplicate that whole sequence over, make sure it lines up. We'll do that one last time. And that's pretty loud, so I'm just gonna change the audio down a lot. You just want it to be something in the background to give that feel. So we can adjust the gain by like negative 10. And then I brought on my flash two transition. It's basically just brightness and contrast. I tweaked it to fit everything properly. And now I'm just duplicating it throughout. So now when you play that, the sound effect feels a little bit more real because there's that slight camera flash. I didn't want anything too aggressive, but you can see every single time it clicks over, there's a nice flash just to show that like a photo is being taken. And I'm gonna do that exact same thing for the one second shutter. So I'm literally just gonna copy and paste all my effects from the other nest. I think I like this lower shutter speed one. You can see what we got. 
It's a bit overexposed. I'm gonna mute the audio so we don't have to listen to this on repeat. And I think I'm a fan of the one second shutter speed a little bit more. I think it has just a little bit more motion blur. Looks better for our scenario. This whole style with low shutter and just taking pictures, just about getting creative, playing around with your camera. There's a lot of cool stuff that I've done in the past with low shutter. And it's been one of my favorite ways to transition between clips and just create an effect very simply. Like it's pretty much all done in camera. There's a few things you can add in post. But like I said, you could pretty much be done as soon as you drag the pictures in and they're like three frames long or five frames long. Honestly, I haven't done it in a while. If I were to do it again, I would probably have the frames last like five seconds and just be a little bit slower. That way the sound effect doesn't sound so fast. But either way, it's just kind of the concept. And there's one last thing that I'm gonna show you that I think is really cool with the styles. And the last thing is to literally nest everything that you have done and then just duplicate it and drag it to the end. Right click on it and go to speed and duration and click reverse speed. So now when it gets to the end, it kind of just reverses back out and it kind of has that parallax effect. <laughs> and I just keep adding stuff, but this is really cool if you add an adjustment layer on top of all of this and use lens distortion and keyframe it. That way it has a little bit more of like a parallax look. So I'm gonna go right to the dead center and have it be like negative 15-ish. And then keyframe the beginning to be a little bit more aggressive. And then I would just do the same on the end as well. And now it will have a bit more of that distortion effect. And I said I'm done, but ideas just keep coming to me. You can speed ramp this whole sequence so it kind of like has a little bit more flow so it's not as linear, but we'll leave that for another video. You can add on so many different effects, paper overlays, transitions, film overlays, sound effects, just so much to it. And it's a really simple effect, but when it's done right, and it's pretty hard to do wrong, honestly, uh, it looks cool. And that's why it's been one of my favorites for so long. If you guys want more videos to watch, here is a video of me trying Blender for the first time. I think all editors should learn Blender, so definitely click on this one. And here is a video of how to edit like Cole Bennett. It is a really simple style, but I like the video as well. Peace.